Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted a really cute Vimarana dog in watercolour using just three colours and I'll be talking a bit about colour mixing and harmony and what I learnt throughout the process of this painting. I've also got an announcement to make about my Etsy shop so make sure you watch till the end of the video and I hope you enjoy it. This week I'm trying out a new watercolour paint I bought which is this tube of professional watercolour paint in the shade Transparent Orange by Winsor & Newton and I'll be using it alongside two other colours from my Schmincke set of half pans, Olive Green Yellow and Payne's Grey, but I'll list all of my materials in the description box along with a reference photo from Pixabay if you want to go and check them out. So let's get started. I drew out my outline sketch in pencil first onto my watercolour paper and began by mixing up the colour for the background. I only really wanted to paint in a background to help emphasise the bright highlights I could see on the top of the dog's head in my reference photo, so I thought I'd use the wet in wet technique and keep it quite loose. My aim for this piece was to keep it quite simple in terms of which colours I was going to use and try and achieve a sense of cohesion in my painting by the way I mix the colours together. So rather than just painting the olive green yellow on its own, I added in some of the Payne's grey that I was going to use for the dog's fur, which also helped to darken up the green a bit and will really help those highlight areas to stand out. I then carefully pre-wet the area around the dog with clean water and then applied my green grey mix to the wet paper, letting it bleed out and do its thing. For the lower part of the painting I changed the colour up a bit and mixed orange with a small amount of the same grey green mix to create a softer green brown colour. I applied this onto wet paper again and quite liked the colour mixes, but once it had dried I thought the top of the painting looked a bit odd, so I applied another layer to try and even it out a bit. So with that dry it was time to start painting in the dog and looking at my reference photo at first glance this Vimarana looked soft grey in colour but after taking a closer look I saw quite a variety of hues ranging from soft browns to dark greys. So rather than adding in another colour I experimented with mixing my transparent orange and Payne's grey together. And you can see on my palette that when mixed these two colours make a really nice brown. I can lean this more towards grey by adding in more Payne's grey or use it more of a brown just by mixing in more orange and I can change the value just by adding more or less water. I switched over to a smaller round brush and used more of the darker grey colour to begin painting in the eyes and some of the darker shadow areas within the dog's fur. So while I'm doing that let's talk about what is meant by harmony in a painting. Now I'm no expert in colour theory but I can share with you what I understand and what I've learnt so far, but please feel free to add a comment below if this is an area where you have more understanding or practice so we can all learn more together. So put simply, harmonious colours are those that are adjacent to each other on the colour wheel and you can use two or more adjacent colours up to around four or five to make a painting that is considered harmonious. In real terms, this means calming or nice to look at. It's not as bold, for example, as using opposite or complementary colours, but it's easy on the eye. So in my painting, for example, I'm using orange and a yellow-green, which technically aren't directly next to each other on the colour wheel, but both lean more towards yellow than they do towards blue on the opposite side of the colour wheel. Grey is kind of neutral so can be used alongside harmonious colours without clashing or spoiling the harmonious feel to the painting. Now this is a really basic interpretation of course and colour theory is a huge area which people have written whole books on, so I would suggest if that's something you are really interested in knowing more about to go and see what other information you can find, either here on YouTube or in books and so on. You can also try it out yourself and experiment with colour combinations that you like, since after all art is subjective and there aren't really any set rules that you have to follow. Sometimes breaking the rules is what makes a painting more interesting. I think Picasso was quoted as saying, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. 
So I think it's good to know a bit of the colour theory when you're just starting out, but that's not to say you can't experiment to find out colours you like together. I really like with this painting how, even with this first layer, the olive green yellow looked in the background with the pale orange brown hues that I started to paint in on some parts of the dog's ears and face. So far as the techniques I chose to use for this portrait, I used both the wet on dry and the wet in wet technique to create a mixture of soft and hard edges and add further interest to the piece. I continued to slowly build up a variety of different colours and layers in the fur just by varying the amount of orange and grey in my mix and then gradually worked my way down the face filling in the nostrils, the nose, the muzzle as well as the fur underneath the dog's face. I was also careful to leave some of the white of the paper where I could see some of those highlights. When this had dried I began to paint in the beautiful orange scarf around the dog's neck. Again, I began by painting in the darkest creases in the scar first, using concentrated transparent orange, and painting onto dry paper. I softened out any hard edges I didn't want just by using a clean damp brush along the paint edge. For the larger areas of the scarf, I also used the wet in wet technique again and was able to softly lift out some of the highlight areas just using a clean brush that I dried off on a piece of paper towel. For the tassels of the scarf, I applied a light layer of the transparent orange first and then once it was dry, went back over with another layer of more concentrated paint to add definition. Next, with the scarf completely dry, I mixed up a really dark brown for the dog's chest and applied it onto dry paper so I could carefully go around the scarf and get the depth of colour I needed here. Then when that was dry, it was just a case of adding further layers and glazes to both the Weimaraner and his scarf to really bring him to life. This painting did spend a long time in the ugly phase, to the point where I didn't think it was going to come together, but I was determined to see it through as this reference photo was one I'd had in mind to try and paint for months. And besides, I absolutely love this breed of dog and wanted to do it justice. I was really pleased that I found a way to mix the colours for his fur through playing around and experimenting with the Winsor & Newton transparent orange and my Schmincke Payne's grey. I had wanted in this piece to achieve a looser look to it overall, so tried really hard not to put too much time and effort into the fine details, and concentrate more on colour mixing and values. I think once my first layers were mapped out, I was able to do this. I did though still try and paint broadly in the direction of fur growth, to help the fur look natural and realistic. When it came to painting the dog's eyes, I did use a bit of imagination mind, as in the reference photo, they look more yellow than orange, but I didn't want to introduce another colour, so simply diluted down some of the brown mix I had left on my palette, and I think it looks okay. Right, so next it was back to the scarf to add another layer of that transparent orange. Now this professional grade watercolour is absolutely beautiful and offers a wide range of tones from a light peach when diluted with plenty of water right up to the most vibrant bright rich orange in its most concentrated form and I'm really looking forward to seeing what else I can do with it. It has the highest light fast rating of 1 and is a single pigment colour containing PO107. It has very little colour shift when dry and simply glows on the paper. Like I did on the first layer, I applied more concentrated pigment in the folds of the scarf, but this time I also added in some grey for those really dark shadow areas. Thank you. 
Okay, so with the addition of another layer of orange, I realized I needed to build yet more color onto the dog's fur. I did this using the same method and techniques as before. So whilst I'm doing that, let me tell you about what's happening in my Etsy shop next week. So a little while back, we reached 4,000 subscribers here on this channel. And as a way to say a huge thank you, I thought I'd have a sale in my Etsy shop, Art Hive by Sarah. So from Monday, the 25th of May, that's Bank Holiday Monday here in the UK, everything in my shop will have 20% off. And this offer will go on for one month. So if you're interested in buying any of my artwork, whether it be a print or an original, I'll put a link in the description box below so you can go and check it out. And again, thank you so much for all your support. I really am extremely grateful and it really does mean a lot to me. One thing I must just say though is that because the print shop I use is still closed, I won't be able to replenish stock of prints, so for the time being at least, once they're gone, they're gone. However, from July I am intending on listing more original artwork in my shop that you may have seen me paint in previous videos, which I'm really excited about and will keep you updated on. Okay, so back to the Vimarana painting now, and here I'm just adding a few last glazes to bring the painting all together. I mixed up some more brown using the orange grey mix, and applied a light watery wash onto dry paper. I also used an old flat brush to soften out some of the harder edges on the highlights above the dog's ears. I dampened the brush with water, and rubbed gently on the paper before lifting any paint up with a paper towel. Working with just three colours today really encouraged me to learn a bit more about colour theory, colour mixing and colour harmony, and I hope you found it interesting or helpful too. To finish off, all I had to do now was to add in some whiskers around the dog's nose and muzzle, and for this I used a Faber-Castell Gold Faber White Pencil, but you can use whatever you have for this. Finally, I added in some darker whiskers with my 0.7mm mechanical pencil. But with that, this dog portrait was complete. Let me know what you think in the comments box below, and please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell as well to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you all so much for watching, have a great weekend. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.